Hello everyone and welcome, or welcome back if you've been here before. Now, before we get started on today's project, I wanted to give you just a little bit of an update on the house build itself. I have finally started construction on the house. I haven't shared it yet because I don't feel like I have quite enough content to create a whole video for you. So I'm going to hold off on that until I have just a little bit more filmed and then I'm going to share that with you. So for those of you who have been waiting for the house build to start, thank you for your patience. I promise you we will get there. In the meantime, I'm going to carry on with creating some of the pre-standing pieces that go into the house. And so today I'm moving into the kitchen and I'm going to start the first of the three appliances that I'm going to create for the kitchen itself. So this is quite a large luxury stove. But the purpose of this house is to welcome people into it. So I have a fairly large family and a lot of really great friends. And if your house is anything like my house, generally when we get together, it revolves around food. So the idea of having a cooking surface big enough to make big meals really appealed to me. Now the build did not come without its challenges. I had this vision in my head of the materials that I was going to use and how well it was going to work. And the reality did not quite match up to my vision, but that's okay. I've left some of that in the video because I think it's really important whether you're just starting out making miniatures or you've been making miniatures for a really long time, it's important to know that things don't always go as planned. And sometimes you have to shift gears and sometimes you just have to persevere. As always, your cutting instructions are in the description box below and let's get started on our stove. I'm starting with the piece marked A and the two pieces marked B, and I've taped them together so that I can make the measurements for the horizontal dividers the same on all three pieces. So starting from the top, you're gonna to make measurements at 10 and a half millimeters, 13 millimeters, 40 millimeters, 55 millimeters, and 57 and a half millimeters. Make those same measurements on the other side as well. Now you can take a ruler and just draw all the way across from the left to the right a line from each of those measurements. This is going to be a big help when you go to put in the different dividing portions to divide up the stove. You can go ahead now and just remove that masking tape from those pieces. Now I'm going to take piece marked A and I'm just going to mark across the top and the bottom. I'm going to make two measurements, one at 41 millimeters and the other one at 46 millimeters. And you can draw a line across those as well. Put these pieces together, I'm just going to take the two smaller side pieces and I'm going to glue them on top of the back piece, just like this. And we're just going to glue both of those on at a 90 degree angle. Be sure that all of those lines that you've drawn are all facing to the inside. I like to use my one, two, three blocks or my setup blocks as they're often called just to make sure that everything stays at a nice 90 degree angle. Now I'm going to add piece D and piece E. Now these are both the exact same size, so it doesn't matter which one you use first. Now one is going to go up at the top, and it's going to sit between the marks that you made at 105 millimeters and 13 millimeters. And this is going to divide the oven from the panel that'll hold all of the knobs. The second one is going to go in near the bottom between the 55 and the 57 and a half millimeters. And that's going to divide the oven or the bottom of the oven from the warming tray or the drawer that'll sit underneath the oven. You 
can put your glue on the two short sides as well as the one long side. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a divider between the two ovens. So you should have two pieces marked E and if you want to glue those together first so that it's a double thickness and then we'll place it inside of the oven. So just applying a small amount of glue on one side and put those two pieces together and make sure that they're nice and even and flush on all sides and then I would clamp that until it's had a chance to dry for a few minutes. So once it's dry, you can add glue to the two long sides and the one short side. And then you can go ahead and place it in between those two guidelines that you drew earlier. Then you can just have a look and make sure that it's nice and straight in there as well. And now I've created two spaces for ovens, one smaller one on the left and a normal size one on the right. So the next piece that I want to tackle is the front panel that the knobs will sit on. So I've decided to put 10 knobs on the front of the stove. So on the back I've measured out some equal spacing so that the knobs are the same distance apart. So if you want to start from the left hand side and make a mark at the 10 millimeter mark and then about every 9 millimeters after that until you reach 90. That will give you 10 markings where your 10 knobs will go. I'm also making sure that I'm about halfway through the width of that as well so that those are coming in right in the middle of that strip. I'm going to take my little hand drill and I'm going to drill holes right where all of those markings are. These holes should be about the same width as a sewing pin or a stick pin. So it's about a 0.6 millimeter bit that I have in my little drill. I'm making my little knobs out of a round wooden dowel that's about eight millimeters in diameter. So I've cut off 10 pieces that are about three millimeters in width. And then I've also gone in and I've drilled a hole in the middle of each of those pieces. So going back now to the main piece, I'm gonna add some little braces inside of the oven and those will hold up the grill that goes into the oven. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna be using these little craft match sticks and I'm just gonna cut them to size and I'm gonna glue them in there on that line that we drew that's at about the 40 millimeter mark. And there's all six pieces glued in. So the next piece that I want to add is piece number F, which is the bottom plate. And that's just going to sit inside of those three pieces. So we'll add our glue on the two short sides and then one long side. And then we'll just place it inside those two end sides and pull it up so that it's nice and snug inside of that U shape. Make sure that all of your edges are nice and flush here so that nothing is sticking out afterwards. 
I want to make a little warming drawer for the bottom so that's what I'm going to do next and it can either be one of those drawers that you will put pots and pans in or it could be used as a warmer as well but this is going to be the front piece I just need to build the little shelf or the little drawer that goes inside so these are going to be pieces I J and then two pieces marked K for the drawer so I'm just going to start by putting the back piece on top of the base. So just putting glue on one side of that little strip of wood and then laying it on top of the bottom shelf piece. And then once that's on, you can add the two little side pieces. So you just need to put glue on one long side and one short side and it's going to sit inside of that L shape that you've made with the base and the back of the drawer. So there's our three sides on there and I would recommend at this point to just do a little test fit just to make sure that it's going to fit in that space. So before I go any further now, I want to paint the inside of the oven. So I'm just going to do that with this black acrylic paint. It'll probably take two coats to get good coverage, um, but I want to do that before I carry on any farther, so I don't want to get black paint on anything else. So I've painted the inside of the oven, but as you can see, I did not paint the floor of the oven. And there's a reason for that, which I'll get to in just a moment. So these are going to be my oven doors, and I'm going to put windows in them. So I've just drawn out some rectangle shapes. I just made sure that the distance uh, between the window and the side of the door is the same. And on my particular piece, I've drawn it out so that right now I'm cutting against the grain of the wood. I recommend that you do that before you cut the side that's going with the grain. Um, what I find is if you cut with the grain first, there's a good possibility that the wood will split all the way through to the other side on you. So by doing the sides that go against the grain, you will definitely reduce uh, the risk of that happening to you. Make sure that you're getting up in the corners as well and that you're getting all the way through the wood before you start on the other side. So once your windows are cut out, I'm going now and do a really good sand. You want to maybe uh, take off the sharp edges around where the window is. So I just take some very fine sandpaper and just go in and just give it a nice light sand up in those areas. I'm also going to make sure that the outside edges are rounded off just a little bit as well. And I'll just show you the difference between what it looks like sanded and unsanded. So I pr definitely prefer the one on the left. I'm going to create the hinges for the oven doors just using some fabric. Now I'm just using some pieces of interfacing here, but any kind of light cotton will do the same. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to podge these pieces in half in and half out of the oven.
And after I've attached that cloth hinge, then I'm going to take this second piece of wood that's the same size as the bottom of the oven, and I'm going to glue that in so that that piece of fabric is sandwiched between those two pieces of wood. That's going to create a really nice strong bond so that that fabric hinge isn't going to pull out on you. So while those hinges are drying, I'm just going to work a little bit on the oven doors themselves. To make a window, I've just cut out a piece of plastic packaging. So these could be a clamshell from your grocery store that you either had baked goods or fruit or something in, or a piece of acetate, which you can actually buy in sheets. But um, I find it more economical just to use plastic packaging. So just cut a piece big enough to cover those rectangle cutouts that we put into the door. So even though the main part of the appliance is going to be stainless steel or brushed uh, silver look, um, I made the decision to do the handles as well as the knobs in gold. I just thought it would make a nice contrast for the stove. And so I've decided to do that using some gold vinyl. So what I did was I cut three millimeter strips of this gold vinyl and then I cut those strips into about a one inch piece. And once you take the backing off of the vinyl, you can then add a little bit of glue and wrap that little one inch strip around the outside edge of the knob. So I'm going to do that on all 10 of the knobs. And like I said, if you add a little bit of glue, it should stick to that fairly well. I've also cut out some small squares of that same kind of vinyl. And I think you'll find on most vinyl pieces, there is a grid on the back. And so I've just cut out 10 little squares here. And that's going to go on the top of the knob. So all we're going to need to do here is to take that paper backing off and then add a little bit of glue and attach it to the top of the knob. And then once the glue is dry on that little square, you can just take your X-Acto knife and just trim around the outside of the circle so that the top is round when you're finished. So now I have all 10 of those knobs covered up in the gold vinyl. And so I'm just going to take now a little pin and I'm going to put a hole on the side that has the vinyl, uh, right where the hole that I've drilled right through that knob is. Um, because we're going to need to have to push a pin in from the other direction. So I just want to put that hole in there now so that I know where that pin is going to go later. So here's where things started to go off the rails a little bit for me. Um, I had it in my head that this stainless steel looking vinyl was going to look so much better than painting the piece silver. And so I had decided that all of the rest of the exterior pieces I was just going to cover in this vinyl. 
If I had known at this point how frustrating that was going to be, I might very well have just painted the piece. However, I had kind of gotten about three or four of the pieces done before I realized that it wasn't working the way I thought it was going to work. And by then I was committed, so I carried on. Now things actually started out fairly smoothly. Um, I didn't actually have to put any kind of glue onto the surface of the top of this piece. It actually stuck down quite well. Where I ran into trouble was when I tried to fold that vinyl down to the back. So the first thing that I did was I cut out a little bit of the corner on each. Uh, by taking out that square, um, as you'll see here, um, I've just kind of cut on either side of that corner. And then when I folded back the vinyl, I didn't have any kind of fold. Um, so I did that to all four of the corners. After I cut out those little spaces, I just started folding it back over the edges. And I did have to go over it quite a few times with my fingernail just to make sure that I had a good crease there. And going down the sides really wasn't too bad. Uh, but uh, as you'll see, um, keeping it then to the back of that piece of wood didn't go quite as smoothly. Um, it took a really long time and a ton of glue to get it to actually stick to the back um, and stay there. Um, and you'll find that as I go through the rest of the tutorial of putting on this vinyl, there's lots of times where you'll see where those pieces have popped up and I've had to go back and repress them back down again. So that's what I mean by it being really frustrating. I really thought it was going to stick to this wood easier than it actually did. Um, I even went back and put a layer of Mod Podge on some of those pieces thinking that maybe it would stick better to the podge. It really didn't make a difference. So I added a little bit of glue here which did help. Um, I had to go back and press it down uh, a fair bit but it did eventually stick. And I'm not going to say anything more negative about the vinyl. I think I've kind of made my position clear on what I thought of that process. But I do want to say this, that sometimes you have this vision in your head of what things are going to look like or how things are going to work. And it doesn't always work out the way you thought it would. And so sometimes you just have to kind of shift gears and you have to go back and try something else or, um, you know, try a different technique. And... I think it's it's fine. I think I, I would never um, want to not try something because I was afraid of failing at it. Um, I think as long as you learn something from the process, you failed forward. And that's sometimes just as important as the successes. For the oven doors, I did cut the vinyl a little bit bigger and wrapped it around the outside edge just like I did for the top piece. But for that middle piece where your window goes, I, I ended up cutting it the exact same size as the window. And then that little inside ledge around where the window is, I just painted that with silver paint. Once I had all of the major pieces covered, I went back with strips of the vinyl and I covered the front edge of the front of the stove. I didn't want wood to show in the cracks in between all of the different pieces. This part actually went fairly smoothly. I didn't have too many issues at all getting that vinyl to stick. So here's what it looked like after I got all of those pieces on. So I'm going to attach the oven doors next. So I'm going to start by putting some podge onto that fabric and then we'll podge it down to the bottom of the oven door. So we're putting our podge 
on the bottom part of the fabric. And then on the bottom part of the door as well. Now when you line that up, you'll want to basically put it at a 90 degree angle right on that bar underneath the oven door. And then just fold your fabric up onto the bottom of the oven door. Now once you've pressed that in there well, you need to figure out a way to hold that oven door um, upright um, at that 90 degree angle until that podge has a chance to dry. So what I ended up doing was once I had it on there straight, I just kind of turned it up and propped it onto something that would just kind of keep it straight. Once you have it propped up, you can go back and add another layer of podge if you want to onto that fabric, just to make it a little bit stronger. Um, but I would leave it propped open like this until the podge has completely dried. I want to add the drawer front now to the warming drawer. So you can probably see here on the back, I have trimmed off a little bit of that vinyl on the two short ends. I wanted to be able to glue wood to wood um, rather than wood to vinyl because the way that vinyl was sticking, I wasn't 100% confident that it wouldn't just fall off. So I went ahead and I added glue to the three sides of the drawer part itself and then just added the drawer front to it. To attach the knobs to this panel, I've cut off 10 sewing pins and basically I've just gone in about a quarter of an inch from the top or the head of the pin. These actually cut fairly easy with a pair of wire cutters. When you're cutting the ends off of these pins, I find that if you gently put the sharp end of that pin down onto your cutting mat before you snip, it'll actually keep that pin from flying across the room on you. Having said that, I always recommend that you wear some sort of safety glasses uh, so that you don't get any kind of an eye injury. Add a little bit of glue to the end of that pin and then just gently push it through the hole that you've created in the knob. You can add one pin into each of the knobs that you have. Now you can take each of those knobs and again I would put just a little bit more glue on the end and then just put one through each of the 10 holes that you've drilled in that panel. So now that all of the knobs are attached, I'm going to go ahead and attach this panel right directly to the stove. Now you might be able to see here again where I have trimmed off just a little bit of that vinyl on each end. And again, that's to make sure that I've got wood on wood contact for the glue.
Going back to the oven doors now, I need to figure out a way to keep those oven doors from falling open. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to be using some magnets. So I have these very tiny little magnets. They're about three millimeters, maybe four millimeters across. They're super strong and they hold really well. So I have two of them here and the plan is to attach one to the inside of the oven and the other one to the oven door. So to attach the magnet inside of the oven, I'm going to be using just very small little pieces of those craft match sticks. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach one of the magnets to this match stick. When you're adding glue onto the magnet, make sure that you're putting it on the right side of the magnet. The last thing that you want is to get them on there and find out that the magnets are repelling each other instead of attracting each other. Now I'm going to glue that whole piece to the roof inside of the oven. And I want to make sure that the magnet is facing forwards. So you want to glue that little piece of wood in about the center on the ceiling there. Uh, but more importantly, you want to make sure that that magnet is flush with the outside of the oven or that edge there. You want to make sure that you give that some good amount of time to dry before you apply the second magnet to the door. You can mark on the inside of the oven door approximately where that magnet is sitting and then you can go ahead and glue the second magnet in place. So next I'm going to glue my burners onto the top of my stove. So I picked up these little burners from Timu. They came in a set of two and they actually had a little silver plate that they sat on, but I found that those plates were just a little bit too big for what I wanted to use them for. So I'm just using the burners themselves. And so I've got six burners here. I'm going to put four on one side and then I'm going to leave a space and put the other two on the other side. So it's going to look a little bit like this when I'm done. And then I've just reserved this inside space to put a grill on the top of the stove. So just applying a little bit of that ultimate glue onto the back of those burners. Um, I always find that if I'm trying to glue metal, that this um, ultimate glue works really, really well. It works way better, I think, than just a standard wood glue or a tacky glue. So you don't need a ton, um, just a little bit on each of the edges, and then you can just lay it down on top of the stove top. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and put some glue now around the top piece so that I can add the top on. I'm just using regular wood glue here. I've again trimmed back some of that vinyl on the sides so that I can get some wood to wood contact. So this is just a little tip in case you're having trouble getting those little magnets to stay put. I'm going to be using what RF and Bentley House Mini calls dollhouse band-aids. So I've just cut a little strip of copy paper. It's very thin, but if you glue a piece over top 
of that magnet. It's not thick enough to interfere with the strength of the magnet, but it will help to keep that magnet attached to the door instead of locking onto the other magnet on the inside of the oven and pulling off of the door. So I'm just going to take a tiny bit of glue and just put it onto that white strip of paper. And then you can take that paper and just lay it over top of your magnet and push it down onto the wood on both sides. Next I'm going to go back in and I'm going to finish painting the inside of the oven. It's just that one bottom piece that needs to be painted black. And while I was at it, I also painted the inside of the oven doors. So now we're almost near the end, folks. We're in the final stretch. So I need to create now a couple of oven racks. So I've cut these out of some plastic canvas, which you can find in pretty much any hobby store or perhaps even in a dollar store. And I've cut each piece to fit into the oven. So there'll be one on each side. Now, typically oven racks don't look like this. They're not like a, a checkered or a woven kind of pattern. So what I'm going to do is take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut out some of the rows on this plastic canvas so that it looks just a little bit more like a rack. So I'm going to cut it so that there's basically three sections that go across the front and then I'm going to cut out every second row in between those three sections. So I'll show you what I mean um, as I go here. So this stuff is super easy to cut but it's also very easy to slip and cut more than you intended. So go slow. So there's the first three rows cut out and I'm just going to carry on all the way to the back of the piece of canvas. So there's what they look like now that I've cut out all of those rows. Obviously the smaller one I've only put in two sections because it is a narrower rack. But I think they look pretty realistic. Um, I'm thinking about maybe painting them silver but um, I, I don't see that as a big priority. I think they look okay just the way they are. They're kind of a grayish color and I think it might be okay. just have one more little piece on the top of this and that's that griddle that I was talking about and all I'm going to do for that is just cut out a piece of black cardstock and glue it on. The last piece before we finish is to just add some handles onto the oven doors and to the drawer at the bottom. And yep I'm back to the vinyl. <laughs> so I'm just using some round toothpicks and I'm just going to roll the gold vinyl onto the toothpick. And I actually found here, once I got it started, um, once you start to overlap and the vinyl starts to stick to other vinyl, it actually held really well. So I didn't have any problems at all doing this one. And once you've rolled it up as far as you need to, then you can just take your X-Acto knife and just slice off the excess there. Now we can just go ahead and cut off the ends and just make it whatever length you feel looks best on your stove. Now I have these little jewelry beads. They look like little donuts and I'm just going to slide them onto each end of this little bar. 
So I'll start by just dipping the end of the rod into the glue and then I'll push it back through that bead. Make sure it's on there reasonably straight. And then we'll do the same to the other side. So I've made a total of three, one for each of the oven doors and then one for the drawer underneath. Now I'm just going to take some of that same glue and I'm just going to put it on one side of that bead, um, on both sides, and then we'll attach it to the oven door. And there we have our completed stove. So I have to say that even though it did give me a little bit of a run for my money with this vinyl, um, I'm really pleased with how it came out in the end. I think it looks great. Um, so I am committed to doing the vinyl now because I have two other appliances and of course I want them to match. So those will be coming up in a future video. Um, but until then, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I always appreciate that you tune in. And we will see you in the next one. Bye for now.